So how about those domain arrangers? Hmm, can we kind of use the same idea that we did before and just graph them and figure out the domain arrangers? You betcha, okay? But what you have to remember is that when you're dealing with the composite function, it may have restrictions. And what are the restrictions based on? They're based on the original functions. What's the restriction on the original function usually carries over to be restrictions on this new function, okay? That's really important. So that's what it says right here. It says the domain of the composite function is a set of all values defined by both domains of the original function, right? Okay, now the range, of course, dun, 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 can be determined using the graph. It seems like we're always going back to this idea of graphing it and figuring out the range. Ah, that's got to be the easiest way to do it, I'll tell you. Okay, so let's go on. In most cases, the domain and range of composite functions will be different than the domain and range of the original. Because, of course, you're putting functions together. Best way to do it? Well, here we go. I'm going to use a nice little example here, but I think the easiest way to do it is still using your graphing calculator. Consider these two functions, da-da-da and da-da-da. How would you do a composite function now on your TI graphing calculator? Well, simple, just like we did before. We entered y1, y2, okay? We entered all the equations, and then we used the bars idea. But look what I did. If I'm doing y1, y2, think about this. What am I asking for? I'm asking for g of x inside of f of x. So what was f of x? This was the original f of x. This was the g of x. So I'm taking f of x, this guy here, f of x, and I'm putting g of x inside it. Woo! Step three, graph it. It's going to show all three graphs on the graph. And then finally, deselect these guys, right? Just have this guy highlighted. These two are still there, but it's only going to show you, guess what? There's your final graph. And from here, you can determine the domains, right? Starting here and the ranges starting here. Well, that's super simple. Let's actually do that. So I've got my light, nice little calculator here. I'm just going to put in my f of x. If you remember, my f of x was x squared minus 3. I'm going to put in my g of x, which was the square root of x minus 1. I've got them all in there. Everything looks really, really pretty and good to go. Now, remember what I wanted to find. I wanted to find the f of g of x, which, remember, is the f of g of x, like that. Perfect. So in other words, I'm taking that f of x and putting g of x inside of it. So look, I'm just going to write it exactly the same way. My f of x is y1. Okay, that's my y1. My g of x is y2. So I want g of x inside of my y1. Okay, so here we go. Second, f4. There's my y1. And I want bracket. I want my g of x inside of that, okay? But I don't know, f4, g of x is my y2, and I've got it now inside, okay? And again, like I said, I'm going to graph all of these guys. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to graph all of these guys on the same grid. Da-da-da, da-da-da, and da-da-da. I can't remember which one's which. Well, yeah, I can. I know which one's a parabola. I know which one's the radical function. But what I do want to show you here is I want to be able to shut these other guys off so that they're not going to distract me. There we go. I shut them off. I'm just going to graph. There's my composite function. And from there, it's pretty obvious to see that we're going to start here at 1, right? Looks like a range at minus 3. That looks like minus 3. That looks like 1. So we can figure out the domains and ranges of this guy right off the bat. We can say the domain, right, is all values of x such that x is going to be greater or equal to 1. And x can be any real number. There it is. Our range, then, is all values of y. Woo, make that look like a y there. Holy smokes. Okay. y such that my y's have to be greater than or equal to minus 3, and of course, y can be any real number after that. So that's how you do your domains and ranges on a calculator. Pretty straightforward, huh?
Well, I wonder what that looks like when we have this, when we actually put them together. Well, let's expand this. Wait a second. Let's extend this. We're going to take y1, which is my f of g of x. Okay, perfect. Let's put that in there. Let's take my g of x, which is this guy. Let's put it into my f of x. Okay, so think about it. This guy, g of x, is my square root of x minus 1. That's going to go into my f of x. My f of x was x squared minus 3, which tells you you got to take this guy right here, pop it in there. Check this out. What's the square of this? No FOIL involved because that is one complete term. The square of that, of course, is just x minus 1 minus 3. Combine like terms, this is x minus 4. Interesting. But isn't x minus 4 just a straight out line? Yes, it is a straight out line. But remember, what are the restrictions? The big restriction that comes in is from this guy right here. This guy has a huge restriction. And the huge restriction for this guy is that x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x has to be greater or equal to positive 1. That's why we started this guy, if you remember correctly, that's why we started this guy, this graph right here, at da -da 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 1. Right? There's the restriction for this guy. But why is there not a, why, what is the restriction here for this guy then? Ah, well, take a look at the original. The original went down to a vertex of, guess what? Minus 3. Told to you right here. So there's your other restriction. That's where the minus 3 restriction came from. Oh my. So things that the graph doesn't tell you. Uh-huh. It shows you the restrictions, but doesn't describe the restrictions. So in other words, you have to be pretty, pretty smart to realize that these two combined graphs right here, okay, right here, have a restriction based here on the axis, and this one has a restriction based here for the y's. X restriction, domain restriction. Y restriction, range restriction. And that's one of the reasons why we know that the restriction on the domain and range is x has to be greater or equal to 1, which is this restriction here, and the fact that we're dealing with a parabola that, di that dipped all the way down to minus 3, we realize our parabola has to be greater than or equal to minus 3. Two restrictions based off the original graphs.